Well, <clears throat> nice to see you again, or have you present uh, to join me on the laboratory today. Uh, this will, lab will be set for the Staphylococcus Identification Lab. Uh, this presentation is uh, in part uh, mostly on paper, as it is what I typically have done in the lab, so I'm trying to keep things the same. Uh, this sheet will be useful for you to see what the standards were. Uh, I know that uh, the other section had already gone through this in looking and comparing, and that's why I added the detail uh, here again for these particular organisms. Uh, we have four, but one of them didn't grow very well, so I just went ahead and, and left it as three uh, for uh, the staff. Uh, so we're looking at Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis, and sa uh, Staphylococcus saprophyticus. And so if you look at the, the mannitol types of plates that you see there, it's positive for mannitol. It means that it produces an acid and it will turn the uh, media a yellow uh, for the presence of an acid, of course, indicating fermentation occurred based on the mannitol uh, fermentation. Staph epidermidis is negative and the saprophyticus will be also yellow uh, positive. And this helps us uh, turn the tide in terms of identifying at least one of these uh, Staphylococcus epidermidis uh, as a possible selection for identification. The coagulase is a test that uh, we have performed uh, and it's very much like uh, in disease process microorganisms the ones that were successful seem to have developed a uh, the ability to uh, break down uh, and coagulate some of the clotting factors and what people rationalize this as uh, a way of isolating or putting barriers in front of the immune system so uh, the staph or whatever pathogen uh, can have its way uh, and not be disturbed by the immune system. So coagulase production is important and again we see staph aureus is separated as the one so it, it helps us to identify these two of course uh, in, a di in difference to the top ones here um, allows us to uh, to segregate out uh, the Staphylococcus epidermidis from the Staph aureus, which is really powerful. And so uh, you can see these results. Hemolysis is uh, the ability, of course, to lyse red blood cells with hemolysin. And there are three different types, and we've gone over this as alpha, beta, and gamma. Uh, Gamma is the boring one. There's absolutely nothing that goes on. Uh, beta and alpha are two that uh, reference more of a uh, potential pathogen, and, and beta uh, is bad. This is the way I like to reference the beta. Is it's usually like Staph aureus is is a bad one, and so uh, we use uh, these to to determine if, if they produce the hemolysin. Uh, Staph aureus in, in conflict to these two, uh, it sort of uh, complements the coagulase and gives us two items now to say, you know, I think we're dealing with Staph aureus or whatever we're after. Novobiosin test uh, is a uh, resistance marker that uh, is present on the chromosomes, very stable, and it seems to be that Saprophyticus has the ability now uh, to make uh, resistance to the uh, novobiosin where both of these are sensitive. So this is a way for us to identify or to select the saprophyticus. So you can see that we have several ways to try to identify some of those in addition to uh, the other characteristics that we, we know about uh, these microorganisms uh, in other tests. Uh, but these are the ones that we focused on, and you ran these in the, uh, the lab, and the plates are uh, being, uh, as you see, uh, I took pictures, and uh, you can see most of them. Some of them are a little bit blurry, but you just do the best you can. 
and identify. Uh, now the staff uh, are A, B, C, and D. Even though I said there's three, uh, one of them uh, it grew on some plates and not the other. I'm not going to be really worried if you can't identify all four of them. Three would be good uh, based on the results that you have. Now we identify novobiosin sensitivity and resistance by if it's resistant and bacteria are growing right up to the disc, we know that is resistant. But if you have a zone of inhibition around in the plates, uh, the colonies are growing where the uh, bacteria background the lawn is growing around it, the zone of inhibition uh, that uh, survive that s exists around it, the uh, and at the sensitivity disc um, is uh, this depends on the useless um, the zone of inhibition lets us know that uh, it is sensitive, and we can measure that as we've done in in the labs before uh, in millimeters as to what the the, uh, the width is and we can use that systematically to determine but this test is really the re resistance or sensitivity uh, is uh, a marker that we use to help identify saprophyticus all right so in your lab manual this is right out of your lab manual and I just uh, provided it I don't know if everyone had their manuals or not uh, I was uh, a little bit uh, uh, side blind, uh, blindsided, I mean, uh, because uh, we weren't able to go back into the building on s certain days, and of course those are the days that I could not go, and uh, I've got family members that I'm taking care of. I have uh, my wife who broke her, um, her uh, ankle on both sides. And so she had to have surgery for that. So that's been quite a uh, concern. And it was the same leg that she had her knee reconstructed. So uh, it's, it's been quite a, a time for health care. But uh, she's doing well and everything's moving on. At home, might as well. So the write-up about uh, these organisms, uh, the human surfaces, I think I went over this already in, in the lab, uh, but it's there for you. Uh, to refresh your memory. Uh, these are nasty, uh, pyogenic uh, plus producing types of organisms, um, toxic shock and food poisoning. Um, again, uh, the onset for the food or the illness is typically four hours. Uh, and it's preformed, it's a toxin that you eat on the food. Salmonella, which we're going to talk about in a future lab, uh, it's usually five to six, and you have bloody stools and that sort of thing. So staff kind of sets itself out for four hours, and it's bad. It can last for a couple of days. Uh, I do want you to, to know Noscomal and community acquired. Noscomal, of course, are in hospitals and nursing homes. And the community acquired occurred where healthy people outside a hospital setting, um, they have direct... Um, uh, locker rooms, gym equipment, dorms, and that sort of thing. Um, it can be uh, pretty upsetting to think about those things, but they're out there. Uh, methicillin uh, resistant strains, uh, or we refer to as MRSA, uh, strains that we worry about with the Staph aureus. Uh, the media that I've already discussed that we ran on our differentials, I do want you to know that the mannitol salts, in addition to having the sugar mannitol, and 7.5% sodium chloride. That means that uh, the microorganisms like gram negatives can't handle that amount of, of salt. It's a really rather high amount which the uh, staff can handle. And the phenol red is the pH indicator that turns yellow as the pH change uh, from the red. And uh, so that's the, the uh, one we use. Sheep auger's blood is typically 5% uh, sheep blood uh, added to uh, about 75 degrees C cooled um, uh, uh, regular gloria uh, auger base which is a non-selective type media it's, it's 
the general purpose media. So this is only um, differential. Just remember it's differential, uh, but it's not selective. So I wanted you to be aware of that. And then uh, we looked at um, the staff plates that you already prepared. You have the results for that. And you just compare now uh, the knowns or the first sheet that I gave you with uh, your unknowns with the data that you got on your plates. And then you can use this to uh, identify those. And that's pretty standard. The other is uh, we wanted to look at uh, the, uh, the um, coagulase test, which we did not run because we didn't have it in the lab at the time. But it's it, you uh, expose it and it solidifies the plasma, and that's a positive test. If it's still liquid, uh, then it's a negative test. So based on the characteristics that you saw, uh, and we have listed in the previous section that I gave you here, now you can fill in this chart and uh, make a what we call a flow type of chart and so to help you identify and it's a standard way i typically don't have you memorize these sorts of things so on a lab practical it's being able to interpret the test and then know and how to classify i will provide on a lab practical any uh, of the identification paths for it so you don't have to memorize for that uh, sort of thing so uh, the results that I want you uh, to do uh, is really, uh, even though your lab manual has uh, all of this data, uh, is really just filling this in and identifying uh, your unknowns. And if you can do that, uh, that's really what I'm after. So uh, you can say the just put uh, the unknowns. A, B, and C, and just put the results, and then you can identify them based on that. And um, this is more identifying from the nose and that sort of thing. It doesn't matter. It's just knowing uh, the un the, uh, the bacteria and identifying them. And answer these questions as best you can. Uh, pretty straightforward. I'll go over these again in a later date just to make sure that we have that. So that's pretty much the, the staff lab is uh, identifying from those plates. Uh, you can use teams if you like to get your group together to kind of analyze the plate. Uh, you can number the, uh, the plates in the uh, Word document. Uh, Blackboard is up to its old tricks again and uh, when I upload things it goes to a null file. But uh, I, I uh, was able to fix that. So you should have everything you need. And again, it's uh, the simple, straightforward lab of, of staff. Now, the next one, obviously, uh, we didn't get to. Uh, so we're going to use the plates from the other section uh, to do the same sort of thing, but now for strap. So you'll be using other plates, and you get to go through that experience of identifying pretty much the same way, but we'll be uh, dealing with strap. And uh, that will be our subject for uh, the next video that I will post today on Blackboard. So the only thing you really need to, to worry about that uh, for this lab, yeah, other than knowing the, the, the nomenclature, is identifying the unknowns A, B, and C on those plates that uh, you had prepared. So the other thing I, I did notice, uh, we, uh, I wish we had the lab uh, access. I'd like you to practice more of the single colony isolate and uh, it looks like the labeling of the plates kind of got uh, astray and so sometimes it's hard to identify a plate under circumstances like this uh, to see you know which one's your plate so hopefully you can recognize your handwriting but uh, I will review that again uh, at a future date uh, to make sure we know how to label plates and how to prepare for streaking so I just may have you just uh, do it manually with a pencil or something on a, a, a paper with a circle on it just to get the technique down. So uh, that's that's all I have for the staff lab. And I'll be moving on now to the uh, streptococcus lab on a separate uh, video. 
And if you have any questions, you can email me or you can uh, show up in the uh, during the uh, office hours uh, using Zoom that I posted out there. So I hope everything else is going well for you. And uh, have faith. Everything's going to work just fine. Uh, we're going to do well. It's, a, it's an odd time, but we'll take advantage of it. Uh, being at home and uh, spending a little bit of time. And uh, see what I can do with... Uh, providing the uh, videos and things that uh, will help you uh, understand the material better. Anyhow, thank you, and uh, we'll uh, continue uh, next time with the uh, structure.